and welcome to this maths training video. In this video we're going to be starting our first look at fractions. Now these videos are designed to be used to help with electrical courses, however they'll be of value whatever you're studying if it's about or even just connected to maths. Now maths is one of those subjects that can and should be studied just because it's interesting and fun. However I'm also always keen to try and help my learners understand just why it's part of the electrical course, when surely this was the subject that most of my learners were desperate to leave behind them at school. So let's justify why we're studying fractions. Fractions are important to electricians specifically because we need to use them when we're calculating the total resistance of resistors connected in parallel. And that is actually how we wire up most of the loads in most of the installations that we work in. You can see this in practical action in the video that I made on the subject of combining resistors in parallel, so please go and watch it if you don't believe me that we need fractions for that purpose. But on with this video. Let's ask this question, what is a fraction? Well, in short, a fraction is very simply just a division. That's all it is. But we often use it to represent a small portion of an object, or in other words, a number that is less than one, but more than zero. It's very, very closely related to ratios, and in fact, one way of defining a ratio null, or I should say rational number, is to ask if it can be written as a fraction. If it can, it's rational. But more on that in a future video. So we've got a number at the top of our fraction, and this is called a numerator, and we've got a number at the bottom, and that is called the denominator. And they're separated by this line in the middle that you can see. Now, you can tell that a fraction is basically just a division, because if you look at the commonly used symbol for the division action, you can see it's a dot at the top and a dot at the bottom, separated by a line. The two dots represent numbers, so the division symbol is just kind of a fraction, and a fraction is just kind of a division. It's just the top number divided by the bottom number. Now, the analogy that I always like to fall back on for fractions is always to think in pizza. And we're going to rely heavily on that for what may seem to be, at first glance, some fairly tricky maths. However, thinking in pizza does have its limits, which we're going to demonstrate in a minute. But for now, it's going to help us out. So you can see that we've got a fraction up here at the top of the screen of one half. So one divided by two. And if we bring up my pizza here, you can see that my pizza has been split into two parts and it's been divided by two. And we're interested in just one of those two parts, giving us one half. So the shaded area there represents one half. The next fraction that we're just going to look at briefly is one third. So our pizza now looks like this. It's been split into three parts and we're interested in one of those parts. So our pizza now looks like this. Finally, we've got a fraction of one quarter, or one divided by four. So here you can see that our pizza has been split into four equal parts. And we're interested in just one of those parts. So, so far, that's all pretty simple and straightforward. But what happens when we get a fraction that's a little bit more complicated? What about if we get a fraction that looks like this? So we've got a fraction here of two thirds, two divided by three. So if I get three. two thirds of a pizza for my dinner, fairly obviously I'd be dieting as I can pretty much handle an entire pizza. The question is, did I literally start off with two pizzas in the oven and then divide it between three people? Well, it would be the same amount of pizza everyone would get if you divided two pizzas between three people. But if we start to dissect fractions a little further, we can actually start to think of this top number as being a multiplier. So we've got something, as you can see here, divided into three parts, but then we're interested in two of those parts. So it kind of is like we're dividing by the bottom number, but multiplying by the top number. Now understanding this helps us to kind of answer questions like this. What is two thirds of 12? So if we think about this, we'll write this down as a number now. So we've got, what is two thirds of 12? So let's write that down in numbers. So we've got two thirds of 12. So what we're saying here is actually to find the answer to this question, we can uh, have 12, that's what we're starting off with. We're gonna divide that by the bottom number, so divide by three. 12 divided by three gives us four. And then this top number kind of acts like a multiplier. It's like there's a little invisible multiplying symbol at the top here, so times by two. So if we take 
uh, the 4 that we got from the previous part of the calculation and times it by 2, we end up with 8. So you can see there that by dividing by the bottom number and then multiplying by the top number, we can find out what 2 thirds of 12 is. Now, this idea of kind of invisible symbols and invisible numbers is one that I'm going to refer to quite a bit. Uh, through the course of these maths videos. And in fact, if you go and look at my video on the laws of indices, you'll start to see that invisible symbols and invisible numbers can be really helpful in helping us to understand why certain mathematical things behave the way that they do. But for now, it's enough to know that we've got this times by two on the top and divide by three as the rest of the action. Now the next really important thing to remember about fractions is something called equivalence. And we'll explain what that means as we go through this next section of the video. But basically, it's also known as simplifying. Let's illustrate by looking at one example. So you can see here on the screen, we've got a fraction of 6 24ths, which is a snappy little fraction, I'm sure you'll agree. Now we can simplify this fraction into something a little easier to understand by looking at what both numbers will divide by. Now math teachers like you to do this by finding the greatest common factor, which is just another way of saying the biggest number that they'll both divide by. And I'm sure that many of you in the audience will already have spotted what that number is. But it's not always that simple to spot, so let's show an easy process of doing this that doesn't put you under all that terrific pressure of trying to find the greatest common factor. We're going to start small. Ask yourself, will both numbers divide by 2? Well, yes, they will. So let's see what that looks like in action. So 6 divided by 24, we can say that's going to be the same as if we divide the top number by 2. And if we do exactly the same to the bottom number, so 24 divided by 2. So what does that give us? 6 divided by 2 at the top, that gives us 3. And then 24 divided by 2 at the bottom gives us 12. So can you see there that we have simplified this? We've made the numbers a little bit smaller. So 6 24ths can become 3 twelfths. Now it's really important to understand, and we're going to illustrate this in a moment, that this fraction here and this fraction here both represent exactly the same number. There is no difference between those two. Now we can take it a step further. We'll go back and ask ourselves, will both numbers divide by 2 again? Well, obviously any number can divide by any number, apart from 0. But what we're saying here is we have to be left with a whole number, really. So 3 divided by 2 won't leave us with a whole number. So go to the next number up. Will 3 uh, divide by 3? Well, yes, it will. Will 12 divide by 3? Yes, it will. So let's do the calculation. 3 divided by 3. And 12 divided by 3 is going to give us... 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So can you see there that 6 24ths, 3 twelfths, and 1 quarter are all exactly the same value. They all represent exactly the same amount. We've just expressed them in different ways. So we've simplified from 6 24ths all the way down to 1 quarter. However, what we've actually done is found the equivalent fraction for this. So simplifying should always leave you with an equivalent fraction. Now let's just reassert this point that these all have exactly the same value by going back to our pizza illustration. So if we look at this now and say that these fractions all represent the same amount, so we've just moved those from the previous slide, 6 24ths is the same as 3 twelfths, which is the same as 1 quarter. If we now start to represent this with pizza, so here we've got 6 24ths, so here's our pizza, and it's been divided into 24 segments. You can feel free to pause the video and count those if you don't believe me. And if you look down here, can you see that we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 segments shaded? So that represents 6 24ths. Now, if we look at 3 twelfths expressed in terms of pizza, you can see there that we've got this now has been divided into 12 equal parts. And again, if you look down here, you can see we've got one, two, three of those segments filled in. So we've got three twelfths. And if we do the same thing again over here, we've got a pizza chopped into four parts. And we're interested in just one of those parts, one of those segments. But look at the shaded area. Can you see here this area and this area? and this area 
are all exactly the same. So therefore we can say that 6 24ths is the same as 3 twelfths, which is the same as one quarter. So that's a really important point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to conclude this video here. Now if you're happy with the stuff that we've looked at so far, we've just done a very basic introduction to fractions here, then please feel free to move on to the next video. In the next video I'm going to do some more examples just to illustrate some really key and helpful points to do with fractions and equivalents. So we're going to do a little bit more simplifying of fractions that will help to illustrate some more key points. If you're completely happy uh, with that as a subject, if you think you're completely confident with that, then please feel free to skip that video and move on to the next one where we'll start looking at mixed and improper fractions. So there, there's a lot of value to watching the next video uh, and I think you'll find it interesting. However, if you're completely happy with this, then you won't need to trawl through all those examples with me. So feel free to make your own mind up what you're going to do on that. So there we go. That's our introduction to fractions. Hopefully it was fairly painless, more of a reminder of some basics. And as I've just said, we're going to look in the next video uh, at some further examples of simplifying and equivalence of fractions and then move on to mixed and improper fractions in the following video. So really, if you've watched it this far, well done. Thank you very much. It's always appreciated. And all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.